Golang Object Oriented Programming using the grocery bag example. The following example will demonstrate object oriented principles such as encapsulation and methods associated with structs, which are Go's way of implementing object oriented programming. Now we're going to start with a grocery bag package, and for that we're going to need some methods. So we're going to have three public methods one to create a new bag, another to add items to a bag. And then finally to list the contents of the bag, which will also include the cost per item. We're also going to have a private method, which is going to total the cost per bag. Let's get into the code Let's and get, get started. started. Some of the first things we want to do in here, we want to set up the public methods. And how you do that, you define an interface. And here we're calling it the bag interface. Uh, the name can be any name you'd want, but I'm just kind of associating it to the grocery bag thing. So anyway, so we have a type bag interface which has two methods. An add to add the name of the item and the cost of it and then a print list which will print the contents of the bag itself. Now we have to add the structures in order to add the content or the items to the bag and that's this here. We have a grocery bag which is made up of items which is from this struct up here. So basically it's an array of this one. So you have array of items which will have the name and cost in them. And now we need to actually define the basically the what we would call the new or create the bag itself. So next step we're defining basically the method that will create in a sense our you would call an object and here we call it a struct, but we could say an object for for namesake here. Basically it's gonna contain uh, items which are gonna be predefined that you're gonna set when you call this method out of main. We'll do that here in a little bit. And you just have a predefined items that you're going to put in there. Let's go over where we said these functions are public. Now, how do we make them public? Well, because we're returning this type. We're saying this function is going to return a type, which says it must implement add and print list. And that's what this does when the struct, so the struct, which we'll expand down here below, it has to implement those two methods. And what's kind of neat or could say cool is you could include other things in here. Say if I had uh, an API that I wanted to use in this grocery bag that I'm making, I could say, okay, I want to include, uh, say I had a SQL database. So you have a SQL database definition here, and then you want to include that down here as well. So you'd basically say SQL DB and then like this and so forth. And then you want to repeat it down here with the SQL DB. So what this says is now, not only do I have items that I have in there, but I also can reference an API associated with this, or like it could be yet another package is what this really is, but you're basically pointing to it so that you can use it down here below as well. But since we don't really have that, I'm gonna take that back out. And now what we wanna do is create the methods that, basically this is currently not happy that we don't have these two methods defined because it's saying we're missing a method add, which then obviously we fix that, then it's gonna say, well, you don't have the print list. So we wanna put these two in. So let me go get that. And first we're gonna do the add. So let's put the add in, and here's the add. Now, this is saying I can use anything that's in here, which is basically the structure. Anything that's in there, I can reference in here. And that's what, exactly what we're doing. We're saying t.items. Now, earlier when I said I had the SQL thing, you could in a sense do like t.sqldb or whatever it is as long as it was a part of the structure up here, you can use it down in here. So, but anyway, let's go ahead and take that back out. So now it's probably complaining that I do not have print lists. Now I'll see that much I mentioned earlier. So now we gotta go get that. So let's put in print list. Now, obviously there's no total cost yet, which we did mention what we will do, but right now we're not gonna implement that. We're just gonna show you what it looks like so far. But in order to do that, we need to go into the main. So in the main program, we need to basically instantiate the, or create <laughs> our, our little object here. So in order to do that, we're going to uncomment this and we're going to basically do an import so we can get this in here. So let's do that. And now it's complaining that I don't have anything in reference. So we're going to create that here and we're just going to make a bag, say grocery bag with items in it. So we're going to have an apple, which is 50 cents, banana, 25 cents, and an orange. And then we're going to add milk to it, which is probably not the best idea, but we're going to go ahead and go with it. And we're going to run the program. And here you can see that now we have apple, banana, orange, milk. That's all fine and great, but let's get the total in there because 
Obviously, we said we we're going to do that as part of the program, and we have not done that. Let's close that, and let's go back into the grocery bag, and let's add in the total. Okay, so now we have this total cost, but we're not showing it anywhere, so it's going to just run through and calculate them all up and so forth. So let's add in the total cost here. Now let's go back and rerun our program. Let's clear this, rerun it, and now you'll see the total cost is 449 Now you're probably saying, well, wait a minute. Now, you, you defined this similarly to the print list and so forth, but can I get to that from the main program? And the answer to that is, well, no. So if I go back to main, let's say I go down here and I say bag dot total cost. So bag dot total cost, it remains undefined because I didn't expose that. Only thing I exposed in that type declaration up above was add and print list. Now you can see how this is more like the uh, object oriented stuff you see and other things like classes and JavaScript where you can say, hey, these are the things I'm going to let you get to. And this is the thing you cannot get to. Now, normally, you could call it uppercase. Some people go with, it depends on the person. They do all like lowercase, like total cost or something like that to show that, hey, it's a private method or something like that. And then you can do that and rerun the program, and it should output the same thing. Okay. So that is that part. But now let's have a little bit of fun with it. And remember, uh, I said you could extend these things a little bit. Well, I should watch what I'm saying, extend. You can't really extend a struct, meaning you can't say the word extend, because there is no word extend. Currently, we only have items as an array of items, which is this. But now, we're, let's add something like we did when we talked about the SQL, but in this case, we're going to do labels, which I've already have defined up here. Now, you can see it here, it's very similar to the other one. I have an interface, and in that interface, I have methods that I'm exposing out so you can use them in your main. And pretty much all these are public, so if you did make another one, you could actually make it private with nothing but nobody else could see, like, uh, let's say private methods below. And you can put them down here, but uh, for right now, I'm just gonna keep it as is, and we're gonna use labels in our grocery bag. So first off, let's do that. Uh, how we're going to do that is we're going to use our structure here. Remember when I said earlier you could have other things usable within, well, I'm going to say an object. I know it's a struct, but we're going to say an object. So within this object, we're going to add basically the label. But So in order to do that, let's import it first. All right, so now we did that. Now we got to come down here and we have to define our label. And remember before, in order to use this everywhere so we can reference it down here in our methods, we need to return it. So we're going to say define our label here. So label, label, label labels. Or I just said that reverse. Anyway. So now we want to have this one as the label. And that lets us get to it. So you're like, okay, great. Well, now we have a label, but uh, how do we use the said label? Well, right now we, we're not using it for anything. So, uh, but we're going to here in a minute. But the other thing we need to do, we need to add it to the main program because it's like going, well, you're including this label thing. I don't know what this label is. So let's include the label down here. All right. Now this is going to have a label. So we want to say basically uh, add our label, which will be, say, uh, let's say it's a different, let's say it's called John, John, Smith. That's a unique name. So this is now John Smith's bag. We can do here, we can make another bag, bag two. And let's see, let's add some stuff to, we'll call this one, uh, an apple's fine, I'll make 50 cents. That's all we're going to have in this one. So I'm going to say I'm done with the bag, but now I want to add a label to it. Now this bag is going to be belong to Jane Smith. Not Jane Doe, but Jane Smith. And then that's it. So we want to say, okay, well, Jane Smith has a bag now. And so does John Smith. Well, let's print the back contents for the second one. And here we go. So now we have two bags. We have the first bag, which has those things in it for John, and the other one for Jane. Now back in the grocery bag, we're going to add the label to the print list. So right now, it doesn't show anything, so let's add that. So say for somebody. So who's it for? Let's see. So we want to get the label. So this is going to print out the label for who the grocery bag is for. Let's go to the console. Let's run that. 
And now we see that we get John Smith for the first bag and Jane Smith for the second. Now you've seen how object-oriented programming works within Go. Uh, there might be other things you could do, but we might demonstrate those later using like generics and stuff like that. But for right now, this is kind of like the basics of it. And that's all I had.